Hey, what's up, everybody? So, coming to you today with the Canelo versus Callum Smith, the aftermath. Um, you know, this one just pretty much my opinion, breaking down what happened in that fight. You know, the the uh, the positives and negatives on both sides, um, and uh, where these guys go in their future. So, you know, um, Canelo came in. Uh, you know, I think a lot of people going into this, and myself included, I got caught up in the size for for a minute there. Um, you know, I didn't believe that Canelo was going to lose. Um, I feel like Canelo chooses his opponents very wisely. He knows he can beat his opponents. Um, I think Canelo and his team see something that uh, most of us don't see. And Canelo goes in um, with a confidence that's again not an overconfidence it's just a flat out confidence that he is going to win and he is the best in the world um i absolutely see that in him every time he fights the last uh that pretty much since the triple g rematch um so heading into this one um you know canelo had that again that kind of confidence Callum smith you know the size though man it, it, it really did um it really did make you wonder if this guy was just too stylistically was just too uh too big for Canelo to handle and um well you know Canelo came right forward um I think the only round that I could argue that Callum Smith may have won was the first round um you know every other round even if they were close and Cal Smith did a little bit and Canelo took a uh, round off um Canelo was just was out working him. He was landing the better shots, and and I really think he was just doing better in even in the close rounds. So I really had a hard time giving uh, Callum Smith any rounds in this fight. Um, I just feel like Canelo uh, kept coming forward, kept pressing, and he kept landing a lot of good uh, hard shots. Um, you know, while he's doing that, and Callum Smith just didn't have an answer. Callum Smith really seemed intimidated caught up in the moment he really seemed like he was unsure of what punches to throw and how to and how to do it and he, a guy that size how he's not throwing his jab and trying to box um you know and basically doing what he's done his career up to this point was just surprising to me you know you have to uh you have to secure um you know at least your size advantage by throwing your jab and um and using your height and man he just kept backing up backing up and would not would not counter punch. I don't have a problem with a guy backing up, but when you're when you're not really um, boxing and using your jab to keep a, you know the smaller uh, fighter off of you, um, you know it, it really is detrimental to to your style. And um, you know I think it was a lot of just caught up in the moment and fear. In my opinion, um, I don't think he was he was uh, ready for this kind of fight, um, and I don't think he realized how good Canelo is um you know that Canelo is not going to fall into those uh traps that normal fighter fighters would which is why Canelo is considered to be the pound for pound best fighter in the world um so Canelo kept pressing he kept landing uh, good shots and um you know uh and Callum Smith just uh didn't have an answer so Canelo won a lopsided 12 round unanimous decision two judges gave him 11 rounds um and one judge had it nine to three, which I was surprised by, but um, it was only one of them. So, uh, you know, the other two judges were definitely more accurate because this fight wasn't even close. Canelo dominated and now has two of the three belts at 168 right here. So, um, you know, you you walk around, you know, let, let, let's look at both sides of this fight now uh, and try to see, um, you know, just looking at both sides. Look at Canelo's side, the winner. Um, you know, what does this do for Canelo? Well, you know, it, it secures, if anybody had any doubt, um, you know, we've had a little bit of a, a, you know, a turn in the pound for pound rankings the last couple months. Um, you know, Vasily Lomachenko was, was, uh, widely considered, uh, by a lot of people in the top three, you know, a lot of people were arguing him or, um, or, uh, Terrence Crawford. And then he went and lost to uh, Teofimo Lopez, <coughs> which um, definitely uh, took, uh, you know, brought uh, Lomachenko down and kind of took him out of the race for it. But Errol Spence um, made his name very clear with a dominating performance over Danny Garcia. 
So, you know, there were some that were arguing Spence. Um, Crawford's resume, not big enough, you know, in terms of in the welterweight division, his resume is just not very, um, you know, dominant because, you know, everybody knows the top-ranked PBC thing. So, you know, there were people talking that, you know, maybe Canelo wasn't, um, you know, the legitimate number one. There were some guys, there were some people saying that he wasn't. His resume kind of sells it for him, but... Uh, I don't think people are were looking at Canelo as being as dominant as some some other fighters. So, um, you know, so Canelo came in and kind of wiped that slate clean. He took on the number one fighter in the division and um, and dominated him. You know, and a guy that was so huge and so big. And Cal Smith, you know, was the World Boxing Super Series winner in the inaugural season back in uh, 2018. Um, he beat the number one at the time, which was George Groves. And, uh, you know, the division is wide open, but it has a lot of talent. And um, it's definitely been a division where a lot of the talent, uh, because of promotional issues and stuff, you know, they don't fight each other a lot. So um, this really was to prove the number one there. And then, you know, the WBC threw that extra liner in there for, for their title to be on the line. And now Canelo holds two of the four major titles at 168. So... Um, you know, this was huge for him in terms of pound for pound status to solidify that, which he did. And also, you know, for his, uh, his establishment in the 168 pound division. Um, now he is truly the number one, uh, resume and, you know, officially by beating Cal Smith, there is no doubt. And, um, you know, there's a big question about what, uh, arena he goes in next, but Canelo, being a free agent has so many options. He could go the PBC route, and there's so many options that that, uh, that w- are willing to fight him down that that road. You know, um, he said though, since the win, he said he wants to be undisputed. Um, there is a road to the undisputed crown, <clears throat> you know. But there's there's uh, Billy Joe Saunders and Caleb Plant are the two other champions right now, you know. But there is a road map to get there. And um, when I discuss his what's next on Sunday, because it's uh, Friday and Merry Christmas again, um, you know, I will discuss uh, the roadmap and and how he goes about uh, doing that. But, um, you know, Canelo has discussed what he wants. There's also the Triple G third fight, which a lot of people want to see, myself included. Um, You know, and Canelo just has a lot of options between guys at 160 that are willing to come up and fight him. Um, and guys at 168. Um, I don't really think 175, Canelo moving up or any guy coming down is realistic, Um, but you never know. But, uh, you know, a lot of options there, and we'll cover those when I discuss uh, Canelo's what's next. But this definitely did wonders for Canelo. In my opinion, one of his his best uh, victories that's uh, career-wise is going to go, is going to go kind of... um, people are just going to see the name on the resume and they're not going to give it as much respect, but they should because Canelo, um, Callum Smith was a legitimate, uh, was the legitimate number one in this division. And, um, you know, he doesn't have a stacked resume, I admit, uh, but he was the legitimate number one because he took the crown from the legitimate number one, George Groves, a couple years ago. He's been widely avoided because of his size and his style. Um, you know, and that, that's a combination that shows you a fighter is truly number one right there. Um, and you know, Canelo left no doubt. So impressive, impressive performance by Canelo and, um, you know, pound for pound, number one, number one at super middleweight hold it and is the unified champion there. Um, you know, also throwing it out there, Canelo, uh, there's interest right now that in Canelo fighting his WBC mandatory Abney Yildrim in February. Um, and, and we could be seeing Canelo three times in 2021. We very, that, that is very, very possible. So, you know, just keep yourself, uh, you know, keep yourself updated and watch my what's next, which is coming Sunday. Um, watch it because, uh, I'm going to game, I'm going to game out all the scenarios. I'm going to go through all the fighters at 160 and all the fighters at 168 that could possibly be next for Canelo Alvarez. And I might even entertain the Errol Spence talk. So, you know, um, just keep yourself in the loop because Canelo, everybody wants to see Canelo fight. He's a pound for pound best fighter in the world. Um, and he's the number one moneymaker. So, 
you know, you're definitely going to want to watch my what's next and see what could be possible for the unified super middleweight champion. Let's look at the other side, Callum Smith. You know, the former champ now. Um, tough loss for Callum Smith. In my opinion, I'm very disappointed in the way he fought. Um, you know, Sergey Kovalev, when he fought Canelo, he'd been in big fights, but he fought his ass off. You know, he did the best that he could. He was in that fight. Daniel Jacobs had his moments against Canelo. He just couldn't take the, you know, uh, take the momentum. But he had his moments. The fight wasn't a blowout. And he, you know, he worked in that fight. Triple G worked his ass off. You could have argued that Canelo, that he beat Canelo in their rematch. <clears throat> but, you know, Cal Smith just didn't step up to that level. He didn't. He didn't step up to that level. Maybe he's not the on that level. You know, because right now I wouldn't call Callum Smith the Hall of Famer. Not at all. Um, Kovalev, Daniel Jacobs, and um, Triple G. Two of those guys are for sure Hall of Famers. Daniel Jacobs is arguable. But Daniel Jacobs has performed very well against good fighters. And um, he's a two-time former middleweight champion. And Callum Smith, uh, you know, was the number one in the division. And, you know, he could have and should have performed much better. Um, you know, I know you... Uh, you know, there's if people hesitate. You're afraid to throw punches, but he started to throw three uppercuts at three different parts of the fight that were wide open. And don't get me wrong, I know Canelo's a fantastic counterpuncher, but those uppercuts were there. And his size, man, if he would have landed them, who knows what could uh, happen in a fight? You never know. Canelo's had a granite chin his whole career. Yes. But who knows the guy that could finally lay him out? I mean, you know, you just never know. And you have to go for it to find out. Not even to score the knockout, even to win a decision, even to stand your ground and win some rounds so people aren't looking at you like, wow, this is why we probably didn't know who you were. And that's how he's going to be perceived going forward. Like, well, you didn't have a big name. You were the supposed number one, and Canelo embarrassed you. So, you know... And that's what it was. To me, his performance was an embarrassment. You know, um, I, I like Callum Smith. I do. But um, he's going to definitely drop for, for uh, such a poor performance. And, um, you know, uh, it, it's not going to be much. He's still going to be top five. He may even fall just to number three in the division based on his resume versus the guys uh, below him. But, you know, I haven't decided on that fully yet. I got to go and really think about it. But... Um, it's definitely a tough fight because, um, you know, as I'll discuss in his What's Next video, which he will get one, um, you know, to lose a fight like this, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a big disappointment, you know, and, um, and with his height and how long he was and the fact that he was avoided prior to this, also he went 12 rounds, he didn't get knocked out against a, a good hard puncher like Canelo, um, you know, I mean... Is anybody really going to want to fight him now? He doesn't bring a world title to the table. He's not a huge name. And, you know, he's a guy that probably is going to go 12 rounds with you, and he has an awkward style, you know. And um, that's just a recipe for disaster, a recipe to avoid. And, um, you know, I don't know. I like I like Callum Smith. I just don't know how many big fights he's going to be able to get uh, get in following this loss. And, um, you know, th this was, a, this was a, a, a moment where he really needed to go for it even if it meant him uh, being knocked out in this fight because uh, other people might have signed on to beat him to have a similar type performance so they could, or even better performance than Canelo did. And maybe that's the flip side. Maybe there's guys that'll fight him that'll say, well, Canelo couldn't knock him out, but I can. You know, yeah, but I, I don't know. It's just going to be a while. I think Callum Smith will take some time off. We're probably not going to see him until the second half of 2021. Um, hopefully he can work himself back into some kind of an eliminator by the end of the year. But, again, we'll talk a little bit more about that when we discuss his what's next because I will be doing one on him on Sunday as well. And, um, you know, that's pretty much it on the aftermath, guys. Uh, you know, uh, not a lot of fallout on Callum Smith's side, but Canelo just the sky's the limit. And the information is just going to keep coming and the news. And um, we'll see what's possible. Maybe in the next couple of days, we'll hit, well, I'll get some more pieces of, of information about what possibly could be next for the unified super middleweight champion. But all right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, Merry Christmas. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.